Hi guys, this is Matt Lemke with Through Gamer Goggles, gamer-goggles.com, and today I am doing a flip through for you on the Mwangi Expanse. All right, now this is a big book. It is for Pathfinder Second Editions, and it is a Lost Omens campaign setting book. It has a price point of forty nine ninety nine on it. Um, it is full of wild and crazy stuff, which I hope I can show you in this flip through. I'm shooting for a 10 minute video, so please stick around for the whole thing. Uh, it is going to be brief on what it is, and I intend on coming back and doing a full review at a later time. So with that said, it is a campaign setting book. Uh, does it? I think it does. No. It does. Sadly, it does not come with a pull out map, which a lot of, uh, they've been doing a lot more of lately. Um, this is my first visit to this region. I have flipped through the book before and I know that it has some things in it. It has, uh, so real, real quick, we'll just take a look at the table of contents. We have the, uh, people of Mwangi, religion, geography, screaming jungle, uh, some different areas and a bestie area, uh, probably some items back in here. Uh, one of the cool things about the Mwangi Expanse is that... Well, of course, they have art. Uh, if you know anything about the Mwangi Expanse, it's a wild, overgrown, kind of um, unexplored area where it's easy to get lost. Uh, and as we... Let's see, can I zoom in on the map to give you a better idea real quick of what I'm talking about? So, where is my... Let me do this too. I'm going to grab my pullout map from Lost Worlds real quick so you guys can get a better idea of where it's at in the game world. I mean, that should probably be a giveaway. The Eye of Abendigo. Uh So, this is the northern most part. And then we move into the middle-ish. And then... It's way down in the south. And you can see the area is really kind of uh, swallowed up by this crazy mountainous region, right? And then the mountains drain into this river and make this really large lake in the middle. Big enough that it's probably actually could be considered a sea. And then you've got this wild grassland and this wild jungly stuff all over the place. And then you've got this huge, really rough little mountainous region here uh, off to the port of Peril. And you've got the wild eye of Bedengo over here kind of scaring people from the coast, right? And okay, but anyway, enough of me making wild accusations. Uh, let's, move, let's, let's move on to the book. So in the book, you will discover uh, uh, well first the first thing you discover is reclaiming the expanse, which is a, a brief little intro on a few things. Um, how people react to outsiders, the languages that you're going to find within the expanse, uh, adventure ideas or different adventures that you can definitely do the different kind of threats you're going to find, and the current state of Mwangi. There's a little section on uh, making your own random encounters. Uh, this really is a book that helps you as a GM and as a player to get things. All right, back at it. Now, the first thing, well, the second thing is the history. It goes through a, a history for you. Uh, I did not read through the history yet. Uh, when I come back and do my full review, I plan on doing that. And it's, I don't know, probably about 18 pages on the history. And then you go into the people of Mwangi. And you have the different list of ancestries, language, rarity. Uh, so there are a lot of common groups. There's the Bekyar, Bonawat, the Kadrao. Now, it, you, I get the feeling that the Mwangi Expanse is a very classy South American, African kind of jungle world. Uh, from looking through and flipping through the book, uh, I get the idea that the people live, in, not live in tribes, but they're kind of a tribal, so they're very community-based within and of themselves. 
At least that's my interpretation. Uh, now, I may change that when I come back and do my full review after reading some of it, but definitely some of these things are definitely influenced. Like, if you take a look at this picture here, this individual is clearly influenced by hunting, gathering, the surroundings of their world. I mean, she's wearing a skull as a helmet. And with that said, then you move on over here, and this guy definitely looks to me like he's a city dweller. <laughs> so... And these are the different, uh, oh, and then this is on the Alage, or, yeah, I'm going to go with Alage. Um, it talks about their appearance, which they have large number, they have lighter skin tones uh, than many in the Mwangi Expanse. Uh, and here is, uh, well, here's a Genie Allergy Mask, which is item level one. The mask is forged of precious metals and carved of wood and tasked with guarding the family history. Now, what it does is once per day, you ask the mask about a particular ancestor and the mask speaks to you for 10 minutes recalling its tales about that ancestor, which could be very cool in the right hands uh, or the right GM's hands, I should say. Uh, well, the right players, too, but... I think GM should definitely consider that as a tool. Uh, and then, like I said, there it, it moves through. There's We started on roughly page 20. And there is, just to put it in perspective, uh, 50... We're almost there. A hundred pages so far on the people of Mwangi. And I'm going to put this in here. Just remember that. Now, I, uh, one of the things I did like about this, I like the balance between good and evil and fighting demons. So I like the demon bane feet, demon bane warrior feet. For elves, you gain a plus one circumstance to damage bonus or to damage with weapons and unarmed attacks against demons if your attack would deal more more than one weapon die of damage, as it is common at higher levels at first. The bonus is equal to the number of weapon dice or unarmed attack dice you have, which I thought was very fun. Uh, I actually have a character that's going to swoop that up here soon. Uh, and then, as you get farther back into the uh, people of Mwangi, you get beyond just the little abbreviations, and you actually get into new ancestries. Uh, so, it features... Come on. We'll, we'll go through it real quick, just so you have an idea of what's in the book. The Anadi... Konrasu, which looks kind of like a weird clockwork. Uh, Knolls. Goloma. The Gripply, which is a frog. Shishk. And then it goes into other peoples. Um... There's some more Leshy. And then we move into religions. There are a lot of different religions in the book, and I'm going to cheat, I think. I think I can cheat. Yeah, so it has the different religions. Uh, we'll just we'll take a look. I'm going to turn to one randomly, and we're going to go... I went too far. Lubeco. They're all broken down the same way. Uh, and it's a very familiar pattern. So, spark in the dust. The areas of concern, alignment, divine font, divine ability, divine skill. Uh, and then alternate domains, cleric spells earned, edicts, the anathema, and favorite weapon. And then it goes into the different things. Uh, talks about the uh, avatar spell. And... 
that would be it. Now, with that said, next up is geography. And there are a quite a few areas of geography in the, the book. I like this little bit about stasis fields. Um, and I'm just going to read one little part of it. Despite the dangerous mountains surrounding the entrance and the prison's lethal warding spells to deter any attempts to examine the cells, up close, the Pathfinder Society, Sargavan Guilds, and many others undertook the journey to uncover the stasis field's secrets. So there's a whole adventure there around the stasis fields. And I just like the idea of stasis being whatever I want it to be. Uh, with that said, I'm going to skip through. There's a lot of stuff. There's the barrier wall. Uh, if you're familiar with the Mwangi Expanse, the Mwangi Jungle is actually a fun one to uh, take a look at. There's some really cool stuff in uh, Mwangi. I don't know if I'm ever going to get to play in Mwangi. Uh, but one of the better things, in my opinion, I, I as a GM love the fact that we are always getting new uh, monsters. So that's a key way. But anyway, I want the monsters, which is much farther back than I thought. And again, they have the icons in the book broken down for every, is this cities? Every portion of geography where they have their maps. Uh, and I really do like the fact that they're doing that now. It is one of my more uh, favorite things. And I have to, here we go. So, the bestiary. In the bestiary we have, I don't know. I said this is 290 or 320 pages. There's probably about 15 pages of new beasts. And I actually really like this, um, this picture <laughs> for Grandmother Spider. Uh, it's just kind of cute. And I could see little goblins riding it. <laughs> but my favorite creature in the whole of the... Uh, bestie area, bestie area are the are the Charukai because they kind of look like a cross between what I would consider um, minotaurs and and werewolves. Uh, just by looking at the picture, I love the fact that they've got those burly fangs, those wide, huge, weird feet, and they carry that huge. I don't know. I'm gonna call that a cleaver. Uh, now, what I do wish, well, I don't remember, but I wish that there were uh, some new troop types in here, like uh, a troop of ants that's unique to the Mwangi Expanse. Uh, there is the Milady, which is one of the higher level creatures. There's this weird Rompo, which I've never read, but look at this. The Sigulo. It's like a huge bowl with antelope antlers and almost an antelope head. It's really kind of neat. A new snake. And then you get into the glossary and the index. So, what does this bring that you wouldn't already um, have? It brings a lot of new stuff, a, lot, a whole, whole area of stuff that hasn't been explored before by um, Pathfinder, at least not really, um, at least not for Pathfinder 2. It has a section on ancestries and ethnic groups. It brings uh, 12 deities, 10 are brand new, plus what is crossed over from um, Galarian. Uh, so the Walkana are a really cool story, which I didn't really get into, and I'll get into that more. There's a whole bunch of lore dumps for the cities and, and a bestiary. So for GMs and players alike, this is a valuable book. Thanks, guys, for watching, and have a great day. Hi, guys. Meet the Nibbles, who's going to go down. <laughs>
she just did, decided not to go down my back. So we'll do this for her so she's comfy. Uh, thanks for watching my video, and I appreciate it. Uh, please, please hit the like button uh, and, and share it if you, you know, know somebody who might be interested. And of course, there's always Twitter and the Facebook thingy, and soon I have a newsletter coming. That'll be down there or in a link below, and my kitty cat loves that idea. Uh, so anyway, uh, there was one more thing. There was one more thing. Oh, yeah. Subscribe. Be a part of my community, our community. Let's make it grow together. See you guys at a con somewhere or a local store or if I'm driving through the country, maybe a game club. I don't know. You're not going to go knock down my camera. Bye, guys.